Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Cert Bros. In this video, we're going to be looking at SNMP. This is Bill. You might remember him from such videos as Syslog. Bill discovered Syslog servers can help correlate and manage his log files. This got him thinking. Maybe there are more tools that can help make network monitoring easy. He then discovered SNMP. Using SNMP, Bill can now actively monitor the health of his network, all from the comfort of his own chair. If an interface goes down on one of his routers, he's quickly alerted to the change and he can leap into action. And it doesn't stop there. He can monitor the network bandwidth, CPU usage, and even the temperature of his devices. This is all possible with the SNMP protocol. So let's take a step back. What is SNMP? SNMP stands for Simple Network Management Protocol. It's a standardized protocol used to collect and organize device information on a network. It does this over UDP port 161. Okay, so to see how this works, let's take this router as an example. A device that is SNMP enabled is known as an agent. An agent has several objects that can be interacted with. Some objects are part of an industry standard and some will be vendor specific for this device. For example, this router will have objects for the name, the uptime, the interfaces, and the routing table, to name just a few. Each object is assigned a object identifier, or OID. The OID is a sequence of numbers which at first glance can look like an IP address. This is used to identify the object. These OIDs are stored in a file called a MIB, which stands for Management Information Base. The MIB itself follows a tree structure. This is an example of the MIB structure for the sysname object. As you can see, each level has a number. This is where the OID number comes from. It tells the agent the exact location of the object. So that's the agent and the MIB. But to interact with these objects, we need something called a Network Management System, or NMS. The NMS is a piece of software that can communicate with the SNMP agent. There are a few ways the NMS can speak to the agent. The first way is by using GET requests. GET messages include GET, GET NEXT, and GET BULK. They are used to actively request information from the agent. For example, our NMS may ask, What is your name? and it sends a GET request. The agent will then see this request for the name object, and it replies with, my name is R1, and it sends a GET response back to the NMS. The second way we can talk to an agent is by using SET requests. The SET request is used to change the value of an object on the agent. For example, our NMS might say, change your name to R5, and it sends a set request. The agent changes this name to R5 and sends a response back. The last method I want to talk about is traps and informs. Agents use traps and informs to actively communicate back to the NMS. These are useful for monitoring critical events. The agent can send a trap or an inform to the NMS when an event occurs on the device. For example, if an interface goes down, the agent can straight away tell the NMS software with a trap or inform message. Traps and informs are two different types of messages, but they both do the same thing. The difference is that informs are reliable. An inform message will wait for an acknowledgement from the NMS. If it doesn't receive one, it will resend the inform. A trap, on the other hand, is sent and then forgotten. Even though informs are considered reliable, they both still use UDP. So now let's look at SNMP in action. 
Here is my PC, which is acting as our NMS. I also have a connected router, which will be our SNMP agent. The first thing we need to do is configure the router to accept SNMP requests. So I'll go into global config by typing configure terminal. Then I'll type SNMP server. And we have several options here, but the one we want is community. The description says enable SNMP, set the community string, and access privilege. A community string is similar to a password. If a request is received with the correct community string, the agent will reply. So we need to type SNMP server community, and then we need to choose a text string. In this example, I'll just write search bros. If I then type question mark, you can see we have an option for read only access and read write access. I'll type RO for read only access and press enter. But I also want write access. So I'll just press the up arrow on the keyboard, remove the RO, and then type RW for write access. The last thing I need to do is configure an IP address on the router. I'll type interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0, which is the interface connected to this computer, IP address 192.168.0.254, with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, and then no shutdown to bring the interface up. With the interface now up, our router is ready to receive SNMP requests. So I'll minimize the router. And I'm going to open this program called Managed Engine Mid Browser. I'll open it full screen to make it easier to see. As you can see, this is a very basic program. A Mid Browser lets us query the agent's Mib using SNMP. Before doing that though, we need to tell it which device to query. So I'll add the router's IP address, which is 192.168.0.254. I'll then need to add the community string we set. So I'll write search bros. We also need to enter this in the right community string as well. And we'll leave the default port of 161. On the left side of the screen, we have some pre-installed MIBs. These are standard SNMP MIBs, but you can add your own vendor specific ones as well. If we open up one of these MIBs, you should start to see the tree structure we saw earlier. I'm going to use the sysname object as an example. If I right click on sysname, I have the option to send a get request or a set request. If I choose get, a request will be sent to our router. So the first one timed out, which sometimes happens, if I run it again, you will see the router responded to our request and gave us the system name, which in this case is R1. Remember, we can also change values using SNMP. If I change the text in the value box at the top, let's say we want to rename this router R5, I then just need to right click on sysname again, but this time choose set. The router will respond with its new name of R5. But just to be sure, let's send another GET request. And yes, our router is now named R5. We can even open the terminal, hit enter a few times, and we will see the name has changed. So that was a good introduction to SNMP. But to see the true benefits, we need to look at a monitoring application. I have a program called PRTG Network Monitor. This tool lets you monitor your network devices. Now, this isn't a PRTG tutorial, but I do want to show you a few things so you get a good idea of what SNMP can do and what is used for in the real world. The first thing we need to do is add our router. We go to devices at the top of the screen and click add device. We'll choose network infrastructure as the group. Click OK. Now we need to choose a name. Because we just renamed this router, I'll type R5. 
Then I'll add the IP address. And if we scroll down, we will see the options for the SNMP credentials. The version V2C is already selected. And I'll change the community string to certbros, which we set earlier. And then click OK. So now we've added our router. We can go to devices at the top of the screen, select all. And we can see our router has been added. If we select it, we can now see the router details. But there's nothing here yet. And that's because we haven't told it what to monitor. To do this, we need to add something called sensors. So we need to click over here on the right, add sensor. There are so many different sensors you can add here. But for this, I just want to choose some very basic ones. The first one is system uptime. So how long this router has been up for. Hit the add button. There'll be some options. Then click create. Now we can see the sensor has been added. Let's add a couple more. The next thing I want to monitor is the traffic. I'll click to add the sensor. And on this, we have a few more options. You can see here it's already found the interfaces. We just need to choose which ones to monitor. Let's choose all of them. And maybe I also want to monitor the errors in and the errors out. So I'll select that as well. Click Create. And the sensor for each interface is added. I'm going to add one more sensor. This time, I want to monitor the health of this device. Now, because there are so many health options, it took me a minute to see the one I wanted. I'll speed this bit up a bit and spare you the pain. Once I finally find the sensor I'm looking for, I click Add. This sensor lets us monitor several different hardware components. I'll just choose CPU and memory and click Create. Now I have all of my sensors added. It will take a few minutes to gather information. In the meantime, I'm going to start a constant ping to the router and try and generate some traffic. I'll open PowerShell and type ping 192.168.0.254 space dash t. And I'll let this run for a few minutes. OK, so now this ping has been running for about five minutes. We should now have a bit of traffic data. If we go back to PRTG, click on the interface we've been pinging, we can now see some data. We can see traffic in, traffic out, and if there have been any errors. We can also see a live graph of the data received. This would be great for looking at, say, traffic spikes. This is just one example, but you can do a lot with these monitors. You can set warnings and alerts, and even email and SMS notifications. Hopefully, this has demonstrated the benefit of using a centralized SNMP server. This video is part of our full CCNA course, which can be found in the description. So please feel free to go and check that out. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. The support from you guys really does help this channel grow. Other than that, thank you for watching.